it was just a normal day like any other. I wanted to play a song that really needed a pick. I swear I must have at least a few dozen guitar picks at my home. I spent literally 20 minutes trying to find one. I looked in my guitar bag, I looked under the amp, I even looked inside my acoustic guitar. But I could not find even a single pick. I would normally dismiss the idea of 3D printing one. It can't be any good, right? However, desperate times call for desperate measures. I downloaded the first guitar pick model I found online, started the print, and within 5 minutes I finally had my pick. And it... works? It seems just like any other pick I've ever bought. Incredible! This must be the smallest, fastest, most useful print I've discovered so far. So many questions started popping in my head. What thickness do I prefer? What material should I print them from? I've only ever played with the classic pick. Are there any other shapes that I might like? Let's answer all of these questions one by one. Even one tenth of a millimeter difference in the pick's thickness has a fairly big impact on the feel and flexibility of it. You can order sets online which have 10 of each common thicknesses, but then you'll end up with hundreds of picks that you don't really like and just a few of those that you prefer. With 3D printing you can easily generate all sorts of thicknesses by rescaling the model in the slicer. Print a few, pick your favorite and then create as many of those as you like. In Prusa Slicer make sure you're making actual copies with Ctrl copy and Ctrl paste and not just instances with the plus and minus key as those would all change in the scale at the same time. If you want to input exact height values, click the lock icon in the right panel first, which turns off uniform scaling. Then you can edit the height of the object just in the z-axis. Picks come in more shapes than you might be aware of. Other than the classic shape, there's the jazz pick, which is great for fast picking, tri-tip, which has bigger grip and can be used on all three corners, or the exotic looking shark fin, famously played by the Beatles, with different sound for each corner. You can also quickly tuck it away under your index finger, thanks to the fin arc, and switch between strumming with a pick and fingering. You can get all of these ready to print from prusaprinters.org. You can get even more creative than the mentioned shapes though, Who's going to stop you if you decide to print the pick of destiny? The devil himself? Yeah, right. <laughs> Just like the rest of the models in this video, you can get this one from prusaprinters.org. I've created it in Blender using the sculpting tools, which we have a separate video about, and it was a lot of fun getting the look close to the one from the movie. If you use the color change feature in Prusa Slicer, you can even get that black and green combo going. Which brings us to another easily customizable feature of the pick, which is the color. You can match it with your guitar, your band color scheme, or just pick whatever color you love. Some picks are perfectly smooth. You might prefer one with a textured grip though. You can emboss a simple pattern, a short text or a band name, or even a simplified band logo. Use the color change feature to make those shapes stand out. Or you can subtract the shape to create a hole in the pick. Both embossing and debossing work similarly well. At this point you have picks so cool, you can use them as a super inexpensive, yet practical merch to give away on shows. If you add a small hole to the top of the pick, you can put it on your keyring. Handy! If you match the hole diameter to the diameter of your metal tuner, you can always keep one pick on your guitar. This solution is nice, because unlike various pick holders, you don't have to add anything to your guitar. If you're designing your own pick, you can add the hole in the CAD software. Though, maybe a better and more universal way is to do it directly in Prusa Slicer. That way you can add the hole even to designs you downloaded online. Plus, you won't have to keep two versions for each pick, with and without the hole. We have a whole tutorial about modifiers. But in short, right-click the model, 
choose add modifier, pick either one of the simple shapes or load a custom mesh. Then set the infill, top and bottom layers and the number of parameters to zero. In the upcoming new version of Prusa Slicer we will simplify all these steps into one special modifier called negative volume. You can add a band logo or band name in the same way. You can use the monotonic infill for simple angled lines, but especially with shiny filaments, you can get nice results with more interesting patterns. The octogram spiral, Hilbert curve, and concentric infill work especially well. If you're going to use an infill pattern that doesn't change between layers, for example concentric, I'd suggest making sure you have at least one rectilinear infill layer in the middle of the pick. This should decrease the chance of the pick breaking along the extrusion lines. If you want to get really fancy with the settings, you can use the seam painting feature in Prusa Slicer. That way you'll make sure the perimeter loop is continuous in the section of the pick that hits the string. If you're a fan of blues or jazz, where you can play the bass line on the low guitar strings at the same time as the melody, thumb picks are worth giving a shot. They feel a little awkward at first, but they make the lows clearer and allow for slightly different playstyle. Thumb picks need to fit really well, otherwise they can slip from your finger, so you will likely have to print a few and try several different scales. After six months of playing with 3D printed picks, I was started to think that I won't break even a single one. Finally, after a lot of beating on an acoustic guitar, the thinnest pick that I've been using broke. It was a 0.5mm thin PLA pick, which is extremely thin. Generally, it's safe to say that 3D printed picks won't break, no matter the material you choose, especially if you use medium or thick ones. The main difference between the materials is their stiffness. PLA picks feel about the same as it's 0.1 to 0.2 mm thicker PTG and ASA counterparts. If you have our Prusament PC blend, you can create extremely durable picks, which lie somewhere in the middle when it comes to flexibility. In short, I wouldn't buy a spool of a specific material just to print picks. Use whatever filament you have on hand. Even a 50 gram sample will be enough to print dozens of picks. Once you find a pick that you prefer, with just a few prints, you'll have so many of them, you'll never have to look for a pick again. Rock on and happy printing!